What's up guys? Today I'm going to be talking about what to expect when you're buying a used phone, where to get them from, talking about software updates, resale value, also the questions to ask and what you, you know, what you're looking for to get the best deal, how to go about, you know, shopping for a used phone. Um, so it could be older flagship, mid-range, budget phone, whatever. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into where do you want to get these phones from. So typically I get phones from Amazon or eBay. Those are my go-to places that are very, um, you know, they're very efficient, right? Um, you know, very big companies, very efficient. You can also get uh, phones from a site called Swappa. Now, I've never actually bought from there, but a lot of my subscribers have and they, you know, highly recommend it. And also, it's just really good to just check out different sites. So you see, we have the Note 20 Ultra here. Um, so, and one of the things I like to look for is eBay uh, certified refurbished. So you'll see a little check mark right there. That's typically uh, what I like to, you know, buy from if I'm just trying to do something quick. Or you can actually just bid on phones as well too if it's from an individual seller. Now, there are questions you're going to have to ask the seller um, that I think is important because, you know, a lot of sellers, they don't, put out the IMEI um, so I'll basically I'll tell you guys you know what that is and how to check for that but you want to ask for that but one of the things I like to do is look on Amazon look on eBay and just look at the prices so we see no 20 ultra here is trending on Amazon it looks like 379 383 and I typically like to tell you guys to buy unlocked phones I don't like buying locked phones if I can avoid it unless it's a really good price I don't like being locked to certain carriers right and also I, I think updates hit faster to unlocked phones so you can see on Amazon right now Note 20 Ultra a little bit more expensive but we can get a certified Note 20 Ultra certified from eBay seller has 96 percent that's also very important so look at these sellers ratings and look at how many ratings as well too very important and what I like about buying refurbished phones is that these phones are um, inspected, right? So basically just to give you a rundown, the products are repaired, reconditioned to 100% functionality by vetted sellers uh, or the manufacturers. So that's what I like about this. They are inspected. They run diagnostic tests on them, make sure everything works. Typically, refurbished phones, from what I understand, is they get sent back so they could be cracked, have a cracked back or a bad motherboard or something went out, bad battery, whatever, and they replace the battery or replace whatever broke in the phone and then they sell it. So that's basically how you can think about it. So every product goes through extensive testing to make sure it meets the highest standard per condition. And then you'll see based on uh, each category. So if a phone is good, you might see some minor cosmetic, uh, like some scratches, you know a little bit of scratches probably on the edge or something like that that's good condition but everything is you know it's fairly good condition it's like basically like you know use right if a phone is very good that means the owner took very good condition of it you won't see you'll probably see some light scratches maybe right but it's look like very good condition excellent would be like you know the s21 ultra i bought you know you could probably tell somebody probably had it in a case it was very careful with the phone and um, you know it just almost looks pretty much brand new right so that's how I like to buy phones I like to buy them from you know eBay refurbished because it's faster you know the phone isn't expected um, also Amazon's version of that would be Amazon renew you'll see that renewed right here so that's what I like to do and like I said go to di each different site you know go to eBay go to Swappa and price check you know make sure you're getting a really good deal and pay attention to the seller pay attention to the ratings and also uh, like I said you know just look for the best price um, like I said bidding on phones you know that that can be a little bit time-consuming um, but that's also something you can do to get a really good deal as well too alright guys so the next thing I want to talk about is for guys who like to buy from individual sellers like for instance it would be me like if I was trying to sell this galaxy phone right um, the first thing I would do before I buy a phone is I would ask the seller for the IMEI and I would check it to make sure it's not blacklisted. I like to go to this site, IMEICheck.net. You can put it in there. It's free and it'll go ahead and let you know. So basically, the reason why you're doing that is because sellers can, and this, this does happen, 
So let's say I bought my Galaxy locked on AT&T and let's say I didn't make the payments, right? So what will happen is it'll the phone will get blacklisted because I didn't make the payments and what will happen is people will try to make, you know, some money so they'll just sell it on eBay and if you don't ask for the number, they could, you know, sell it to you and you'll be stuck with a phone that can't be activated, basically doesn't work. Um, so you definitely want to avoid that because then you're going to have to return it and all that stuff and it's just going to be a waste of time, right? So ask for that number, make sure it's clean and you'll be good to go. Alright, so the next thing is, and this is just something I like to do, even with a refurbished phone, uh, individual seller phone, I like to run the phone diagnostics. With Samsung, it's built right into the Samsung's members application, so if you don't have it, you can get it from the Samsung store, but you just come over to the support tab, phone diagnostics, and then it'll go ahead and test everything in the phone to make sure it's working. Uh, I like to do this because it'll save you some headache just in case you find out something's not working. And I would just make sure you test out all the buttons and stuff like that um, as well too. And um, yeah, but basically I just run this with every new phone I get to make sure that I'm not getting, um, you know, I'm not getting a messed up phone, right? Because it's going to be annoying because you're going to have to... Um, you know, you're going to have to take it, send it back. Uh, with iPhone, same thing. You run the Phone Doctor app. So that's free in the App Store. And it'll go ahead and you can go ahead and run that application. They have a ton of them. You don't have to just use this one. You can just type in Phone Diagnostics in the uh, App Store. And it'll pop up. Phone Diagnostics. And you can see there's a ton of applications. This is a pretty good one as well, too. That'll test out everything as well so I would do that for iPhone as well too. Guys I noticed from a lot of people who are not very tech savvy they get kind of confused about updates uh, for iPhone and Android so I'm gonna start with iPhone because it's a little bit more simple. Typically iPhones have around six years of software updates right um, so I'll give you guys an example uh, the iPhone 8 plus is gonna get iOS 17 which I was shocked by but if you go to a site called GSM arena and you type up your phone uh, so you can see iOS 11 12 13 14 15 16 so it's looking like that's that's five years right or that's five updates right and then it's looking like it's gonna get iOS 17 and I personally don't see the iPhone 8 plus getting iOS 18 because typically they stop at like a six years so even if i do iphone and i'll show you guys why why i think that and i could be wrong um iphone 6 plus right so this one started at ios 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 that's six years it got ios 15.7 and then it stopped so that's basically what you can expect when you buy an iphone so look your iphone up look at the initial um os update that it launched with and then you just add six to it and then you'll know how many updates you'll get now again this is Apple so I don't know it could get more updates I don't know right but that's like the, what I'm going with from what I'm seeing from Apple so Android is a little bit so Android is a little bit more complicated for the average person to understand um, so basically I want to start off with just Samsung phones because Samsung phones are most popular um, especially and it's, it's a it's a little confusing right so if you have a Samsung phone that launch or, or if you have an S21 phone, like a flagship phone and up, right, you get the longest updates out of all Android phones. You get four years of OS updates and five years of security patches. Um, so basically, if your S22 launch with Android 10, let's say Android 10 to make it simple, um, then you'll you know you'll get Android 14, right? And you go to the GSM Arena, look that up, and you'll see. So, but it's it looks like the policy is only for the S21 series and up. So that's that. Typically, an Android phone, uh, let's say like the Pixel 6 Pro, typically an Android phone will have three years of major OS updates and security patches after that. Now, the thing where people get confused is that. A security patch is not a major OS update, guys. It's just exactly what it sounds like. It's just a security patch. They're just patching holes in the in the system, right? So, you know, I know a lot of people, they're like, oh, my phone only gets three years of updates. Yeah, so that's why I said if you really care about, like, having the latest version of uh, 
software you probably will be better off getting an older iPhone since you do get the full you know update um, so yeah so take that into consideration so this is something that I was asked to mention and basically he was trying to tell me that iPhones retain value more in the used marketplace than Androids and that's pretty much true so if you're somebody if you really like to buy used phones and you like to you know use them and then sell them and buy, put it to put the money towards getting a newer phone or whatever you want to do um, yes iPhones do retain their value so just to give you an example of that we'll type in S22 Ultra unlocked and we can get a S22 Ultra for yeah we don't want that you see B minus we definitely don't want that we want it in good condition eBay refurbished right so a good condition S22 Ultra would be 639 and let's look at the iPhone 13 Pro Max so iPhone 13 Pro Max you can see eBay certified eight hundred and two dollars and I'm not sure I can't remember but I think the s22 launched at twelve hundred dollars and the 13 Pro Max it had to have launched at um, maybe eleven hundred dollars right so let's actually find out I can't remember off the top of my head I don't think it was twelve though okay yeah so it did launch at one thousand it said it launched at one thousand dollars yeah, so it was it was eleven hundred dollars. So the iPhone you can see retained its value over the S twenty two Ultra. Um, so yeah, that is one thing that you need to know. iPhones do retain um, you know better value in the you know use smartphone market for sure. And lastly, uh, when you're choosing between iPhone and Android or whatever, uh, the biggest difference is obviously the operating systems you can think of Android as a more open operating system um, and then you can think of the iPhone as a more closed operating system uh, to me you just have more features on Android it's just a more flexible operating system to sort of make the phone how you want it to be and sort of you can just do more on the phone in my opinion it's not as close as iOS and then iOS obviously if you have like your family you know FaceTime and the iMessage uh, chats and all that good stuff uh, that's you know really great for that and and then like I said you get longer software updates uh, and also with Android you just get more variety as well too so I can still get a phone with a headphone jack I can still get a phone with SD card support I can get a dual screen phone I can get a folding phone flip phone uh, there's just you know limitless options with Android right so take that into consideration and um, yeah, so hopefully this video was helpful. I was trying trying to uh, not make it too confusing. Um, but let me know what you guys think.